Station. This is Danielle from the Royal Institution in London. How do you hear me? I hear it loud and clear. Excellent. Hi, Samantha. It's great to be talking to you from the Royal Institution Christmas Lectures. Hello. Hello, everybody. Great talking to you. Now, one of the most fascinating things about this for me is I'm actually talking to you on my mobile phone. But I'm guessing that your mobile phone doesn't work up there. So how do you communicate with your friends and family? It's funny that you mentioned that because I've been up here for about three weeks and I have never thought about my mobile phone once while uh, when I'm on earth, I'm constantly checking my mobile phone. So I guess I am getting over my mobile phone addiction. But we are not disconnected from our family and friends up here. We have uh, access to the internet. It's uh, somewhat slow, but uh, we do have it. And then we have uh, the possibility of giving them a call over an IP, a voice over IP phone. And once a week, typically on the weekend, we can even see them. We have a two-way video conference where we can see them and they can see us. That's amazing. And is it a weird feeling for you to be, to be very distant, to be literally the most distant woman uh, from Earth at the moment, but actually feel very connected at the same time? I, I guess, uh, you know, I've, I've come to expect it to be this way because uh, the, the ISS, the space station, has been very well connected for, for years now. Um, so sometimes I find it, um, yeah, even paradoxical when people um, think about my job as being an astronaut on the space station as being very isolated. And it's true that physically, of course, I am very far away. But compared to many other jobs, I actually have really good possibilities of connections. Uh, you know, I, I'm thinking about people who, I don't know, are deployed on submarines or are uh, doing winter overs in Antarctica. I think we on the space station are way more connected uh, with uh, Earth and with our fellow human beings and friends and family than those folks are. Yes, I, I think you're right. Um, so in, in these lectures, we are talking about communication and, and the limitations of communication. And it, it's really wonderful that we can hear and see you from space. But that's just using two of our senses. And, and so what we're trying to explore in the lectures is, can we go to the next level and use our other senses to communicate? So would it, wouldn't it be great to be, be able to reach out and touch somebody who wasn't there? Um, and share share an experience of, of all of the rest of their senses. Uh, for you in, in space, what is the next big goal or challenge in terms of communication? communication. Well, I can think of uh, simple things like, uh, for example, right now we, we don't have continuous coverage on board uh, in terms of satellites. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, our antennas are just not be able are not able uh, to pick up a satellite for a few minutes, sometimes even 10, 15 minutes, and so we uh, for that period of time we, we say we are in loss of signal, so we lose communication. So one next step could be to have continuous coverage. Um, another next step could be to to make it um, easier on board. For example, having uh, wireless headsets. Uh, well, now most of the time we use uh, headsets that are or microphones that are connected uh, via a, a long cable. Um, but then, of course, what you say is interesting, to be able to see uh, the world through somebody else's eyes or, or, or even being able to touch them. Um, I think there is an interesting uh, technology demonstration which uh, is um, co-developed by ESA, uh, which is going to fly with a fellow European astronaut of mine, Andrew Morgensen, next year. So I'm not um, too involved with it, so I hope I'm not seeing um, anything misleading. But uh, I think the point is, is really that, to try and uh, demonstrate that technology uh, sort of an augmented reality technology where people on the ground can see what the astronaut sees and um, and the astronaut can have um, um, overlays um, that augment reality with, with information that can be sent from the ground. Well, that all sounds absolutely fantastic and very, very fascinating. And I'm, I'm sure it would inspire uh, the next generation of, of scientists and engineers. Um, to get into that work, which is what we want to do in, in the Christmas lectures. Uh, so from your point of view, what should the next generation of, of engineers and scientists be working on to help achieve those communication goals that you need from space?
Well, I think uh, the next generation of engineers and scientists should be working on stuff that I cannot even imagine right now because uh, that's really the cool thing about being the next generation. You know, I, I think you should, uh, um, you know, if, try find your own path and especially at the beginning of your career when you're not uh, into the um, that professional environment for, for that long, you can really think out of the box and come up with uh, new solutions. So um, I don't want to... Um, you know, shed any light on any preconceived path, but on the contrary, I would encourage people to really think after the box and maybe come up with some revolutionary ideas. That's brilliant. I'm sure that would be very, very inspiring for them as well. Thank you. So um, you've only been in space for, for a few weeks now. What have you found most surprising about microgravity? Oh. <laughs> um, I guess I'm surprised but how much I have enjoyed it, I am enjoying it. Um, I, I thought, you know, it would be something that uh, would be fun for a few days and then I would just get used to it and get over it. But, um, you know, it, it's just, I keep enjoying it so much. This this feeling of floating, it's something so new and, and, and different from what we're used to. Um, and, you know, sometimes I find myself thinking that it had never been different, that I've been floating all my life, but of course that's not the case. And um, I find myself exploring new ways of, uh, you know, b controlling my body and, and my attitude and my orientation and flying through the station. So it's been a lot of fun. I'm not very good at it yet. Uh, so that, that's fun, too, that I'm uh, um, learning every day. That's good. So can you do some practice now? Because I'm sure all of the audience would like to know, have you perfected your somersault yet? <laughs> Well, to be honest, I've done only one somersault the other day, and that was by mistake. I didn't intend to, so <laughs> I will uh, I will hold off from that. Um, it was wonderful. It was really great. I mean, everybody was impressed, except that I didn't intend to do it. But <laughs> so I will hold off from that um, for now, and uh, it'll be for a later call. So yeah, you can keep perfecting it, and then we'll we'll um, keep tracking you on Twitter, and you can tell us when you perfected it. Yes, definitely, I will. <laughs> okay. Now, obviously, these are the Christmas lectures, so we're we're very close to Christmas. So, how do you celebrate Christmas on the on the International Space Station? It must be so different to being at home. Well, of course, it's definitely a day uh, in which we have time set aside to um, to talk to our family and friends. Um, as I've mentioned before, we have these opportunities of um, video conferences and on special holidays like, like Christmas, uh, of course, uh, there's time set aside for that. And then, we, of course, we'll spend uh, time together. We have a little Christmas tree here, uh, which is uh, planted, so to speak, upside down in, the, in our uh, main lab. And um, our commander, Butch Wilmer, has, has been so thoughtful to um, set up... Um, um, some, um, oh, I guess I'm, I'm missing the words, but, uh, um, you know, things for us to gather gifts for each other so that on, uh, on Christmas Day, hopefully, um, all of us will have uh, gifts from our crewmates. Uh, and it can be something simple like uh, somebody's favorite drink that you come across and, and uh, you put it aside for them so that uh, it's going to be a fun uh, experience on, on Christmas Day to, to see what your crewmates have set aside for you. Oh, that's fantastic. And it'd be interesting to see what sort of gifts that you give each other, if they're sort of the normal gifts that you would give each other on, on Earth, or um, they have a sort of a, a space a theme to them as well. Well, you know, some of us might have thought um, ahead. Um, I have, for example, and uh, and sent up some little things to as Christmas gifts for for uh, for the crewmates. But um, as I said, it might just be that uh, y you know of the supplies that are on board. You know that uh, one of your crewmates really enjoys, for example, a special dessert um, that you normally would only come across maybe once a month, and then you you set that aside when you find it, and then that person is gonna be able to enjoy their favorite dessert for Christmas. <laughs> yeah, that's really nice. <laughs> so, um, in the in the lectures that that we've already filmed so far, we've been looking at some wonderful pieces of technology, and one of them is uh, haptic technology, and we have seen how it can be used for training vets, for example, and it was just amazing. I, I was using this piece of haptic technology, and it was fantastic. And I'm guessing that haptic plays quite a lot, of, quite a big role in the technology for the ISS. Is that right? 
Uh, not quite, but definitely something for the future. And uh, I'm not directly involved with it, but I know that uh, there is an experiment that um, specifically um, studies the, this or aims at developing haptic technology. So definitely something for the future. That's great. And I, I think that will also inspire the, the next generation of, uh, of engineers and scientists as well. So it's been absolutely wonderful talking to you, Samantha. Thank you so much for all your time. I think you're, you're truly inspiring all of the next generation of engineers and scientists down on Earth. Well, thank you so much. I really enjoyed this conversation. And, uh, well, happy Christmas. And happy Christmas to you too, Samantha. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. Thank you, Eastland, the Royal Institution. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.